So the Rugby Championship has come to a close, but it doesn't mean that the action before the Rugby World Cup is over. We have got the first warm-up game for both the Springboks and the Pumas for this weekend. But in this video, we will be trying our best to predict the Springboks starting lineup and reserves for their game up against Los Pumas. Now, they have had quite a few players left in South Africa, which does make it a little bit easier. It does not mean that we will be correct. We normally have a few wrong, but with me today, it is Rugby Itch. How are you going, mate? And also, what do you think of the last game between the Springboks and the Pumas? Maybe a bit closer than a few people were anticipating? Yeah, no, I'm all good. I'm all good. Yeah, definitely um, a closer game than what definitely what I thought for sure um, as a bulk fan. Um, it got, you know, it got a bit edgy at the end. You know, the, the Pumas had an opportunity there to maybe even, you know, close the game and actually win it. But luckily, you know, they, you know, the, the two tries I scored, you know, came after what the 70 minute mark. So it was really kind of a, a it was hard for them to kind of get over the edge really and kind of uh, get the result they wanted. But, um, but I, you know, what? I, I think they'll take it though. I think they'll actually take that um, really just only one point behind them, even though it's still considered a loss. I think from both perspectives, there's definitely a lot to be learned. So um, yeah, it'll be very fascinating to see kind of who gets picked for this game, obviously um, in Argentina. And there are a lot of changes that can yeah, be just a lot around of the corner yeah. for the spring box. I think that they've gone with a nice mix of players who haven't had a huge amount of game time, but also some are in some pretty decent form binding that into their 23 but we will start with our front row of who we think the Springbok selectors will go with who have you got as that front row yes yeah, so like you said there's a lot of changes already um throughout this whole you know, just this whole squad really but um yeah for that front row i have gone with steven Kitsoff. um i just think you have to put him in no matter what um he had a really good display actually against the pumas in that first in that first one of course um what the cheap or day ago now that we're doing this recording but um yeah he was just brilliant so uh yeah no good to see um, him in action, and yeah, I think he'll kind of be able to kind of transfer that over into this game as well. For number two, I've gone with Bongi and Manami. I just think you have to go with him. He has a lot of experience under his belt, and yeah, I just think he'll be able to add a lot of uh, quality in that hooker position. And with the number three, I've gone with Vincent Koch here. So again, uh, I believe in the past he's played, you know, he was considered normally as a starter in the past, actually, but he kind of got into the bench, making more of an impact and became, became really part of that bomb squad. So um, I've kind of given him a bit of an opportunity once again to get get back into that starting uh, lineup then. Yeah, that's a good front row. So that's, a, that's the front row I've gone with. Hey, I've gone with the exact same. Oh, number one. There you How go. does this always happen? Although, to be <laughs> fair, we only had five props as yeah, our options here. So there was a high yeah. chance we were going to have a couple that were similar. But Stephen Kitsoff, number one, getting over that ball and getting turnovers for his side. He was absolutely phenomenal in the matchup against Argentina. Brings a lot of physicality. It's great in a scrum. I think can really cause some pressure. Yeah. This game up against the Pumas. Number two, Bong Yon Manambi coming off the bench in the last game. Unfortunately, didn't quite have the same impact that we normally see from Malcolm Marks when he makes his way off the bench later on in a game. Marks staying in South Africa, though. He is one of the many who have not travelled to go to Argentina. And then Vincent Cock, I've given him the chance at number three. Has been playing in both of the other games of the rugby championship, so still has a few minutes under his belt. But we'll be looking forward to a possible start in this match. Now looking at the locking joy for myself, I've gone with Jean Klein at number four. Did play very well in that first game up against Australia on his South African debut. And I hope that they give him another opportunity here with the fact that Ibn Etzebeth has not traveled with the team. Seems like the probability of him getting the crack is relatively high. And then at number five, I could have gone with what they went with in that game up against the Aussies, which was Marvin Ori. But due to him playing in that last game up against the Pumas, I decided that I wouldn't put him in the starting side. And instead, I have gone with Ludiaka. And I assume with your nodding, you've probably done the same thing. <laughs> Who would have guessed it? Yep. I've gone also with uh, Gene Clark, of course, at number four. And yeah, Lord Diego at number five. So um, yeah, just... Uh, because it's kind of the standard, really, kind of what you expect. Because, if it, again, when, whenever Lord Diego also plays, he, he he really normally plays as a five rather than a four anyway. And I guess, like, Jim Klein is considered more of a backup option, you could say, towards Etzbeth um, when needed. So this is obviously a great opportunity for him. And like you said, Marvin Ori obviously started the last game. So it just feels right maybe that he'll maybe call the bench, maybe. And I have to say, I'm a little bit sad about the fact that we don't get to see R.G. Snayman get himself an opportunity sure. in the starting five jersey throughout this rugby championship or afterwards, but I assume that that game that South Africa have up against Wales, perhaps that could be the one that they decide to test them out in the starting lineup. Yeah. But looking through at the loose forward trio, 
we don't really have the option of what they had up against Argentina yeah. because there's no fun starting, there's no Peter Steftatoy, and there is no Dwayne Vermeulen available in the squad. So who have you gone with as that all-new look, loose forward trio in this game? Yeah, no, as you said, it's a completely uh, new uh, new uh, free in terms of loose forwards. Uh, for me, at number six, I know he hasn't played here normally, um, but I've I've kind of gone I've kind of accepted in the play there, and I've gone with Franco Mostert here at number six. Uh, I know I know he normally plays as a seven, normally as whatever he's in the loose forward trio, but I just feel his size can add a bit of um, can, is kind of the reason why I put him in put him in there. But um, and the reason because of that is because I put Jean uh, Luc Dupree actually at a number seven jersey. And again, he's a tricky one because he can really play across a whole loose forward trio. But I just thought, you know, in the mind of like what I would like to see, I'd rather have Mostert at number six than Gene at number seven, just for the players we have going with. But uh, you never know. That could be switched around if needed. But um, for number eight, um, this is where I've got my Jasper Visa. I just think you, you have to choose him. He just, he's going to get, this is a great game, I think, for him to get some minutes on the board. So um, yeah, that's my, uh, my loose forward trio there. Alton, we've got our first change. Number Good. six, I have gone with Dion Fori as my oh, number six. Yeah, I felt I that he played it. very well for the Stormers throughout the URC. He hasn't really had a huge amount of time in the Springboks kit, but similar to Fun Start, and those two were going neck and neck when it came to turnovers, one in the breakdown. Mm -hmm. And I think in that first game up against Argentina, we saw how clinical the Springboks can be when they get that turnover and then they are able to have their attack of their own or win that penalty, kick it towards the corner and put the opposition under immense pressure, number seven. You mentioned about how he can play there. So I, I put him there, Franco Mostert, as my number seven for this game. Nice. I feel with that extra option at line out, he's going to be very handy. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what he can do if he is in the starting side. He's probably another player, though, that they could look at in maybe the number five jersey if they did want to make a couple yeah. changes. Maybe you just have Marvin already travel with the side and have Ludiaja coming off the bench. Later on in the game, we will have to wait and mm -hmm. see how they go with that. Number eight, I have gone with Jesper Visa. I did predict that they wouldn't play him in that first game up against Argentina and instead would rest him so that he could have a big performance here up against the Pumas when these two sides collide again. I had to go with him as my number eight. But now we move on to the 9-10 combo. Now, one thing is a guarantee. We're not going to have the same 9-10 as what we had in the last match. In fact, we are going to have neither of the nines that we had. No Grant Williams, no Fuff the Clerk. So for your 19 combo, it must be my turn, is it? So I shall go yeah. first. So for my 19 combo, I have gone with Jaden Hendrickson at number nine. Now, I thought he may have had a chance of starting that last game up against the Pumas. And there's also a chance that they look to him off the bench in this one. But I have gone with him in the starting side. I feel like him and Marnie Libok, that combination of two younger players, I've pretty much just given away. Who I've got it fly half. Going with LeBoc again. But having those two young players combining. I mean, we saw Australia try the tactic up against New Zealand. It didn't prove effective to a certain extent. But for South Africa, I feel like the way that LeBoc's been playing, he's been getting most of his kicks over as well. So definitely a handy option to have in that starting lineup. And Hendricks, uh, he needs some minutes before we get into the World Cup. And perhaps this is the game that they will look to use him. Yeah, no, um, to no surprise here, I've gone with the exact same team as, two as you. Again, I could have gone with Amit Kobasanak here or even like um, Herschel Yankees, but I kind of have for the same reason as you, kind of wanted to see more of a younger, I guess, um, kind of duo there with Manny Lubok as the number 10 option as well. So, yeah, I just feel like that, that's a good combination to go with in, going into this game. And again, I mean, you're, you're most likely going to face, I'd say, what, Bertrand Oud and probably, I'd say, Santiago Gonzalez, that probably says the 9-10, so... It's going to be an interesting, you know, battle actually. If it was between those, um, you know, kind of those four players there, that you kind of gets the best out of each other in that situation. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Now we will move on to the center combination. Last game, it was Damien Dialinde at number twelve, number mm. thirteen, Jesse Creel. Now they don't have Damien Dialinde with them traveling to Argentina, yeah. which I think makes the number twelve jersey a relatively one horse race, unless. There's a plot twist thrown in there Could involving be. a certain Damien Valimza. But who have you got as the 12 and 13? Yeah, so for my 12 and 13, um, I've gone with Andre Estezen there at the number 12. I just thought he was really impressive against the Wallabies in that opening round in the Rugby Championship. And I think he'll be able to kind of um, prove that once again against the Pumas um, with ease, really. I think he's just, he's a great player to have, actually, as kind of a, he's a reliable option, I think, 
that the Springboks can rely on now. And I think he's someone who's just just that game alone against the Wallabies, I think, has now put him into the frame, I think, of now not being considered as an ifty ifty in terms of the World Cup selection. I think he is now, in my opinion, considered a just he's he's in that category now. He's he's definitely a part of that squad, I think, just because he's a great cover to have. If you need him to, you can play as a 13 as well if needed. But uh, but no, I think number 12 is where he's best suited at. And yeah, for number 13, um, I've given him another, another opportunity here. I've come up with Kanye Am. So again, I could have gone with Jesse Clill here if I wanted to. Um, even like, you know, if I wanted to put, I don't know, Demi Williams, so maybe at the 12 and move Andres Dezen back to the 13 and put another player there. But um, but no, I decided to go with Lucanio Williams because I think, you know, like I said beforehand, just want to get want to see him get more minutes. And I believe he came off the bench, if I'm not mistaken, for the last game. So I just want to see him kind of get more of a starting opportunity within this one. So yeah, that's my my 12 and 13 combination there. Just like yourself, I have gone with Andre Esterhazen as the number 12. I feel like in that first game up against Australia, like you said, he really proved a lot of people wrong and showed mm -hmm. that at the moment of form, some would even say that he is ahead of Damien Dialinde, even Ooh. with the way that Damien Dialinde has been playing. Mainly because, I mean, Dialinde just back from injury. Andre Estehazen, you know, you look at some of those stats yeah. that he had in that okay. first game. Statistically, he's right up there yeah. at the moment uh, for inside The, the more I think about it, I can, I can see why you're saying that. So, yeah. Number 13. I've gone with a man who has also returned from injury recently, and that is Lucanio Arm. I decided that if they're going to try and build up a little bit of chemistry between Esther Hazen and Lucanio Arm, now's the perfect game to do yeah. so. Although there might also be a chance that they look at Jesse Krill on the outside and have that Esther Hazen Krill combo just to test whether or not that is yeah. something that they will do in the future. Yeah. Seeing yeah. as it's two guys that aren't considered as starters just currently, mainly because it's the Dialinde and Lucanio Arm show in that centre pairing, but maybe yesterday's an incredible could be an option for the future. We will have to wait and see. But now up to the back three in this contest here. Number 11, I have gone back to Makazoli Mapimpi, which may not be a popular opinion, seeing as Kurt Leorinsen normally has his try scoring prowess that he's able to have, didn't score in the game up against Argentina which was kind of surprising because of how many tries that man has been able to get for himself over the last little while. Although saying that, Malcolm Marks, actually another player who wasn't able to score in that Pumas game either. Makazoli Mapimpi, a little bit more game time could do him a world of good. And I still got Kurt Leorinza somewhere. It's just not on that left wing. Number 14, I have gone with the youngster, Cannon Moody. Did get himself a game up against Australia, but he didn't really perform. In fact, he was probably one of the players who had the most lackluster game. So this would be the perfect yeah. one to bring him back in and try and build up his confidence just that little bit more out on the right wing. And then number 15, I've gone with Damien Valimza. We didn't have the option of Vili oh, okay. which means Valimza. He had to be in there somewhere, I believe. And now we get to see that Lebok and Valimza combination. We've seen it with the Stormers multiple times throughout the URC. So I'm curious to see how it goes at international level. Is it the same as me this time as well? Or have you got to change? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I, 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 look, I, I wish I could give the honest answer. Say, you know what? I'm going to make a last minute change here. But no, I've got the exact same theory as you. I've gone with Marcus Oli, my at number 11. I've gone with Kenny Moody at number 14. And Demi Valimza at number 15. I just think... It just seems right because it's, it's, it's a good balance, I think, for, for all of them. And you want to see, obviously, Mbimbi back in the starting lineup. You want to see kind of maybe give, just be given an opportunity, of course, in that 14 jersey. And then, yeah, Demi Williams, uh, you know, we've all said this. We think he's probably best suited at the 15. So why not give him more minutes there? So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of the, the expected back for him. We obviously both agree on that. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they choose that or not. Unless at a stretch. Kurt Leorinza, number 15? Yeah, I was thinking that that's the only, that was really the only thing I was considering because I actually, no matter what, I wanted to play those two wingers, but it was like, you can't really leave Damien Williams out again. It's like, you can't do it, like, unless you, what, play him as the 10 if you wanted to, but then I was like, well, man, the book's on a roll here, so why would you do that? So, yeah, it just makes more sense to put him as the, as the 15 option. I think. Alrighty, well, now we move on to the bench, and at this stage, we're running low on players that we can select. Indeed. <laughs> for these last spots. So for yourself, front row replacements, who have you got? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be quick and simple with this. Uh, yeah, I've gone with Joseph Tueva at the number 16 jersey. For number 17, this is where I've gone with Thomas Dubtoit 
And for number 18, I go with Trevor and Kanye. So yeah, that's my um, I guess my backup front row this at least. And I think that's pretty um yeah, I think it's a standard front row to go with um, with the options they have. So yeah. Okay. I've got to change. Number 16, yeah. still Joseph Weaver though. Oh, yeah. Number 17, I've gone with Gerhard Stinnekamp. Uh, okay. Mainly okay. because I just have that little bit of a feeling that at some stage before the World Cup selection, which is actually happening on August 7th. So that's only a couple of days yeah, after this close. match. I believe that they'll want to see whether or not Stinnekamp is a good option, maybe for coming off that bench at number 17, mainly because they've got so many options, but most of them are actually tight head props transition mm. to loose head. Whether or not that's Thomas Detoy, Trevor Nakanye, who I've actually got at number 18, just like yourself. Oh, okay. I've switched them back. Well, this game, we got to see him a little bit off the bench up against the Pumas, but I would like to see a lot more of him. And this fixture, looking at the rest of the Ford replacements. Now, for myself here, even though last week they went with the 5-3, I have gone with the 6-2. Yeah. Is that the same. same for yourself? Okay. So we've got three Ford replacements here. Number 19, Marvin Ori, the remaining lock option that I have got that I could select anyway, mainly <laughs> because of who I've gone with elsewhere. Number 20, I've gone with Jean-Luc Dupre. I hope to see yeah. him get some sort of game time before the Rugby World Cup squad is announced. And then number 21, the Stormers' dangerous player, it is Evan Ruiz, who I've gone with at number 21. Yeah, no, we're pretty similar on the lines of that. You know, I also have Marvin Ori, of course, at the number 19 jersey there. I've actually gone with Dylan. Uh, this is where I've gone with Dylan Forty, actually, at the number um, number 20 spot. As he, you know, he can cover a lot of positions, really, with a six, if you need him, number eight, if you really need him there, or even Hooker. So, um, yeah, he definitely has to be in the squad, I think. Good uh, utility player to have, and then yeah, I've also gone with um, Evan Roos at number uh, number twenty one jerseys. Yeah, that kind of makes up, I guess, the the loose forward trio there off the bench. Okay, so that leaves two positions, and I believe we've got four players that we can yeah. select here. The four players remaining for these two spots are <laughs> Herschel Yankees, Kobus Reinach, Jesse Creel, and Kurtley Arinse. Yes. So, of those four, who have you got? I have decided to keep on. Well, I think no matter what, we do have one change to what you've said in the past. I could be wrong, but I actually have gone with Crosshaw Yankees here as the backup uh, scrum half. I just think I want to see him get more minutes. We haven't really seen him within this rugby championship. So I'm hoping this is the kind of the opportunity they kind of um, give him uh, within these warm-up matches. So I've gone with him as my scrum half option. And this is where I've actually gone with Jesse Clill, actually, as the backup to the 23. So... I don't think you will have him. I could be wrong, but um, I just think Jesse Clear is someone who I think just deserves to get more minutes on the board. I think he, he had a yeah, decent game, I'd say, against uh, the Pumas you know, at home. Um, so I, I think he kind of carried that over, obviously, um, in Argentina. So, yeah, that's my uh, yeah, that's my starting 23, really, for this uh, for this game. Well, you are correct. I do not have Jesse Creel. Okay. But I also don't have Herschel Yankees. Oh, okay. So you have Who changes these wow, okay. last two spots. Fair enough. There's Kogus Reinach as my number 22. And number 23, Kurtley Arunsa. And what I mentioned earlier on about Arunsa, maybe that is what we get to see in this game. He could either go out on the wing if needed, yeah. or perhaps he could come on the field for Damian Valimza at fullback. Maybe Moody transitions somewhere else in that back line. They've got options here, and depending on how the game is going, will of course depend on how many of those changes and the switches that we get to see from the spring box but nonetheless do let us know in the comments who you would have in your lineup for the game up against argentina and it's going to be kicking off at i believe 10 10 a.m new zealand time which is just after midnight for the south african viewers on the sunday morning but if you did enjoy this video be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel be sure to check out rugby itch this link is in the description down below and also check out the rugby recap our podcast where we do previews and reviews of all of the games of international rugby taking place. But thank you all very much for tuning in. I will see you all for the next one.